when we first spoke about the Batmobile, it was quite apparent that this wanted to be completely different. I couldn't wait to see it when I showed up on set. I was like, where's the Batmobile? The basic talking points were relentless force, raw power mounted in this frame. I like that you can see the construction. It's not like it's alien technology or like repurposed super high-tech military technology. Like it's, he's built it himself in his basement. We really believe that Bruce Wayne slash Batman alone, developing and building that car from scratch, and we thought that as an idea was a cool idea. The look of the Batmobile hopefully reflects that he couldn't care less about his wealth and the Wayne Industries at this point, and that he's doing it all himself. We brought in this car designer named Ash Thorpe, and he apparently also had always dreamed of being involved in the creation of a Batmobile. And then we had all of these other designers come in. We started sculpting. We used a UK company called Curvature Group to fabricate the body. They specialize in prototyping. Everything that you see on here has been made, been 3D printed, been cast in aluminum, or it's been cast for real. And you got all of these elements that were real, and we were looking at real cars. I wanted them to have, like, the kind of nitrous sort of turbocharged that you would get from drag racers. I wanted it to feel like a real car. We knew that within our car chase that we were going to be crashing into other vehicles. So it was important to us that we made the front of the car as strong as possible. The idea that its purpose was to perform, but also to, to be almost like a battering ram. And so the front of the vehicle had to be very powerful. This lovely witness line here, but literally an inch or so in, it bolts up. We used a big block LS3 engine that had to fit under the hood. We have effects on top of that hood. There are louvers located on the hood that were used as intakes that open and close. Uh, inside that, there was a volume of design that included lighting effects. There were additional flame effects that came out of the top of the hood. And there's this massive jet engine sort of intake and so as the car is sort of waking up and starting to, to, to move, we love the idea that these louvers would open and the, that these sort of gills on the interior would open and you'd feel it sort of start to breathe, basically. Um, originally, the louvers were moving, but we decided that we didn't want to embrace in that. So we discarded that and, um, and that's where we put our water tanks for the traveling rain that we did. The rear of the car, for me, is sort of the genesis of the idea. It's uniquely open. You can look at the car, and you will notice that you can see everything except what's under the hood. Uh, the rear of the car is exposed. The engine is exposed. Many people will ask what engine that's from. This engine is bespoke to the Batmobile. It's fictional. Over 2,000 individual parts you're seeing here that were all individually designed by um, Joe Hira and his team, and then flawlessly executed by Dom and his team in terms of the builds. A gobsmacking amount of man hours and work that came through here. These are aluminum. This is stainless steel. This is um, printed metal which is our, where our flame came out. Which I think is, is quite beautiful, the way that um, we've embraced all of this kind of smaller tube work that fits around this engine. Ash started doing these iterations that got us very excited. You got the sense of those wings that were almost like the Futura in the back, and then you got this Challenger sense. Finding a way of letting Bruce reveal his character and sort of the intimidation factor of sort of recognizing, like, oh my god, that's Batman. As you can see, this car at the moment has been painted for the film. Um, we wanted to always have the car to have this kind of grungy look about it. This used look, we didn't want a perfectly polished black car. We wanted it to look like it'd been used. So the construction department, the paint department put a very nice finish on there that um, we've had to embrace. There was
was a day when they drove the car and put it on the back lot, which was under the L, which is outside the, uh, the Iceberg Lounge. And it was the first time I saw it, and I got to sit in it. And sitting inside that Batmobile was a dream. All-wheel drive, shift, and shifter. And then this is the thruster that controls the, the jet. And then, obviously, his control panel up here. You know, the aesthetic I just love, you know, it's like leather wrap, leather dash, and then traditional sort of muscle car um, gauges. So right here, you're seeing this is all control um, for the jet components, big fuel tanks and cylinders for the various gases and things required to, uh, to drive the jet engine. You're not using a donor car to make the Batmobile. You are building a unique one-off. And in our case, we built four vehicles. We had a ram car that we could use just to ram and destroy stuff. We had a lightweight car that could perform jumps and other difficult tasks. We also had a pod car that a stunt driver could drive from a mounted bolt cage from the top of the car's roof. Our hero car was an electric car. It's quiet and it can move around without, without making noise. This was like engineering an entire other car. You had to modify a roll cage, you could accommodate for electric motors. You're not just adding an electric motor, you're actually adding an entire electric control system that has a fit under the hood. We built one electric car, then we built three petrol cars. The trick is, is that they all look the same. Well, I wish everyone could hear the combustion engine, you know? I mean, there's nothing like hearing that, that V8 roar. The petrol car's got the 700 brake horsepower V8 engines in them. It sounds unbelievable when you <laughs> It sounds like a driving a plane. It's also a four-wheel drive. We've made our own bespoke transfer box in-house that's based around what they use in a, a rally car. It has to be like a monster. I want this thing to feel elemental. You can transfer all the power to either the front wheels or the rear wheels or both wheels, all at the push of a button. And that's something that um, we've used in the past. And from previous experiences, we know that the stunt um, drivers love that because what they can do is they can set the car up and then they've got immediate power where they want it. Anytime you build something bespoke, you need as much testing as you can. You find all the weaknesses, you find all the strengths. Um, and part of that testing is, is that we get to a situation where the stunt department can actually find some really cool stuff that they can do and by testing, we can say, well, can we add that into the sequence? Starting to push the Batmobile and to its limits so we can see where the limits are. But this is, this is what we're here testing to do, to iron out all these problems, get the suspension right, get all the mounts right. Because we've had a few things bend, which is what things are designed to do. But if we can do as much as we can for real, that's what we're aiming for. We always knew the car needed to jump. That was part of our design remit when we designed the rear suspension of the car, is that we knew that we needed a lot of uh, suspension travel. So what we did is we put it in two modes. So we had like the general driving mode, and then we had the jump mode. We designated one vehicle for the jump. That vehicle had longer suspension on it, it had different tires. So the one joy of building the Batmobile is you get a chance to drive it away. At the end of the day, you want to be inside a Batmobile. And I wanted the audience to have that experience. Like the Batsuit, I wanted you to feel it was totally real. The workmanship that's gone into building this car is, is one of real high standards. The intensity of both man and car are just paired together perfectly. They 
both have this sort of real revved up vengeance vibe. This is one of the finest builds ever in feature film history. I mean, the car performs so beautifully. It's been a huge privilege to be a part of that through line of history.